Welcome to the team. Yeah, so it's um, kind of important that you all know the, the, the background and the history from Cornelius that um, that that me, the, uh, the oyster Dundee Alf, is the third generation oyster oyster farmer here in Norway. So we have a very long tradition and, uh, in, in, in the shellfish business. And also, um, uh, Odaina is representing the, um, the, uh, the old school of, um, of, of um, uh, the, the seafood, the, the traditional production of, of, of seafood meals. So, um, Odaina was actually one of the, the, the first uh, chefs here in Bergen that was uh, uh, focusing on local food, uh, like fish and the local meat, also, also the, the local food from the west coast of Norway. So, um, when those things came in as a, as a popular thing five, six years ago uh, here in Bergen with local food. We have actually been doing that for 10, 15 years before. So Odaina was one of the, the first uh, pioneers for local food uh, idea here in Bergen. And uh, we are proud of, uh, of, of, of that and uh, to, to um, to still do it, local food like fish and we're even diving for it ourselves. And now you have to um, go in and learn everything about this history and convey that to uh, the guest. And remember to bring in your own personality uh, into the story. So each one of you has to make your own personal story and put your name forward to the guest and present yourself because you as a person are so important to the guest that you are serving. So as long as you fill the glasses with wine, give them bread on the table, bring the food and if for some reason we are late in bringing the food, if the kitchen have problems, you have to convey that to the, to, to the guest and give them some extra in the glass and the evening will be safe. So, the most important thing for, for you is to be um, uh, happy with yourself and proud of yourself and make your own story. And everything that I have been telling you, you can add on as a background to your story. I have to stress the point that you have to make the guest comfortable at the island. You can, you can maybe imagine yourself coming from Bergen with a boat and be dropped off on, a, on, a, on an island and you are met with some people at the dock and shown to your table. And, um, and you don't dare to, to do anything else. So it's up to you to tell them and f that they can walk around and enjoy the outside and upstairs and they can, they can move around in this uh, restaurant. So, um, I will suggest that you will um, tell the guest uh, to, to go outside and, and, and enjoy the island. And the, the wine cellar, of course, you have to tell them about that and you show them there. And you are the guide for your guest the whole evening and make them feel happy. So, when they leave with the boat, they have really explored the island and, and felt relaxed. They have not been sitting in a Michelin restaurant with a, trying to keep a straight face all night. That's not the way we want them to feel. We want them to feel relaxed, completely relaxed and experience the whole Cornelius Island. Show them maybe in a good weather, show them the helicopter platform, tell them about the landings, tell them about uh, uh, when the waiters are quitting, they have to jump in the sea and story like that and get the guest um, to feel like they have to laugh a little bit and relax. So that's important part of your job. Good luck. 
So, um, um, so ET Fjords is the top um, hauling company that owns um, Cornelius and 1877. And then we have some um, uh, close relations uh, with two other restaurants that uh, is not uh, connected to, to, um, to, to ownership in the ET Fjords, but we have a we have a, a close relation with two restaurants that Odaina owns by himself. And that is uh, Le Matisse, it's a French restaurant in Bergen, and it's a restaurant in Hardanga, Ola Co, that um, our administration uh, will do some marketing jobs for them. And we can also interchange uh, the people working when uh, in periods that we have a, um, a slow business here at Cornelius, you, you can maybe work in, in La Matisse and in Haranga at Ula Co. So that's a, um, that gives us a lot of advantages. And we can also buy in, um, we get good deals with uh, our suppliers when we are a bigger group. So you are actually a part of a bigger group than only uh, Cornelius and 1877 and beside that we have my daughter and my wife they have a company called Top the Fjords and they are selling tours in the fjords with, with, uh, very, with different boats and they bring a lot of customers to 1877 and, and Cornelius so we have, um, in, have a close relationship with Top the Fjords so all this is nice for you to, to know, so you can also explain the guests if they want to, um, to have a tour in, on the fjords. You can tell them a little bit about Top the Fjords. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the, the food. So we um, have uh, introduced a concept here at Cornelius that uh, we call the metrological menu. And, um, the metrological menu has its origin from in the old days when, when Odeino and me started here. It was all different kinds of weather, so um, as it is now, of course. And um, the weather inspired Odeino to make uh, different uh, sources, light sources for nice weather, heavy sources for bad weather. And uh, we served the food that uh, was available from the fishermen. So if it was nice weather, the fishermen could go out in the ocean and fish a uh, special type of fish. And if it was bad weather, they went into the fjords and they, they got another type of fish. So a meteorological menu means that we are getting, the guests are getting the, uh, food according to the supply of the day and the weather. So. Um, and it's also important to know that, um, that the, the owner, me, I'm 71 years now, I'm still diving for, for um, the scallops and the horse mussel and various kinds. So uh, most of the shellfish we are, we are getting here ourselves and we keep them live in the tanks out on the dock. As, <coughs> as, uh, and we are, you can tell the guests that we are pumping the water from 300 meter out from the window of the restaurant, out in the sea, and we have, all the water is being filtered through an ultraviolet filter to clean it, and um, it continuously running water, and we, we keep all the, the shellfish that we are diving live and serve it here. So that's a part of the meteorological menu. So I will say a little bit about um, the organization of Cornelius today. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, um, Odaina and me, we are not uh, a part of the daily team. We are just a kind of a support team. So we have an organization today with a company called Ete Fjords. It's kind of a holding cell, uh, company. And the E.T. Fjords is owned by Odaina and me. And we have, uh, together, we own Cornelius and we own 1877. So um, now a little bit back again to the, um, the building here. So after, after we, um, uh, in 2008, after we invested 20 million 
uh, we come uh, and we got this steady boat uh, from Bergen out here. We got a lot of tourists and a lot of private uh, um, uh, people coming out. Before we had a steady boat uh, from Bergen, it was mainly the business people of Bergen that could afford to have their own private charter boat here. But now, after that, we, we became a kind of a kind of a, a restaurant that everybody could uh, could uh, could use. The reason the reason we named uh, the, the restaurant Cornelius was that um, uh, my grandfather's name was Cornelius, and he was the first person here in Norway who started with aquaculture. He was a very good friend with um, Norway's first prime minister, Christian Mikkelsen, and, um, and they went to learn about oyster in the United States in the Chesapeake Bay back in 1880. And uh, when they came back, Cornelius started uh, growing oyster at this property just east of us here. And uh, down at Tysnes, where, where um, we had the, the, the shellfish uh, buying station, he started his uh, oyster seed production. So um, <clears throat> um, then in my f father's period, um, then the property just uh, at Håkonsvann was sold to the government. So they had to move all the oysters away from um, the property in there and out here around the island. So, um, <clears throat> so this uh, island was um, in the middle of the, the our, our oyster production. <clears throat> so, um, um, our own, the other owner, Od Einar Tüftelan, is his name. He was a chef and he uh, had his education done in Stavanger as a diploma chef. And his first experience was, were in the Hardanger, where he, he was an apprentice and he became a chef. And later on, he was a chef at Fiskekrug and restaurant at Zachariasbreggen in Bergen when I met him. Having a restaurant and diving for the food and telling stories, we always tell the story telling to our guests. And I felt it was really special taking a boat to the restaurant. So Cornelius became very famous. So um, <clears throat> you should uh, all know this uh, background when you are telling the guest that you put yourself into the situation where you understand how hard it was to, 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 to make this special place. And today people are coming from all over the world um, and even movies have been, been uh, have, their, um, have their inspiration from Cornelius. And so um, you actually, uh, you should be proud and we really hope that you will be proud of working here. Welcome to the team.